Reading of the Epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, uh, brethren, but ye are not therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, the bowels of mercy, benignity, humility, modesty, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If any have a complaint, against another, even as the Lord has forgiven you, so do you also. But above all these things, have charity, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of Christ rejoice in your hearts, wherein also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you abundantly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual canticles, singing in grace in your hearts to God. All whatsoever you do in work or in word or in work, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by, by Him. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When Jesus was twelve years old, they, going up into Jerusalem, according to the custom of the feast, and having fulfilled the days when they returned, the child Jesus remained in Jerusalem, and his parents knew it not. And thinking that he was in the company, they came a day's journey and sought him up among their king's folk. An acquaintance, and not finding him, they returned into Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, hearing them and asking them questions. And all that they heard him were astonished at his wisdom and his answers. And seeing him, they wondered. And his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou done so to us? Behold, thy father on high have sought thee sorrowing. And he said to them, How is, how is it that you sought me? Did ye not know that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the word that he spoke it unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. And his mother kept all these words in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and grace with God and men. You can sit there. We are today... The feast of uh, the Holy Family. And just after this Mass, uh, there will be the beautiful school play for Christmas, the Christmas play of the school. You're all invited to, uh, to come and see this. Uh, it's a big work, and every year it's always better and better. We have very good actors in this school and uh, very good also uh, teachers that are training them. 
And I think it will, uh, it's still time of Christmas, and you need to continue to feed your souls, and it's a very good uh, occasion to continue, continue to feed your souls that way. And it will be just after this Mass uh, at the Priory in the Garden. I hope you have something to cover you. <laughs> This week is a special week because I'm alone. Uh, all the, pri the other priests, they are taking their vacation. They merit, I tell you, their vacation because of uh, the heavy, heavy duties uh, we have to carry and uh, continue to pray for this priestly help that we need so much. Uh, and I'm going uh, this uh, Monday and Tuesday to Kansas City for the individual prior meeting and uh, we will discuss about all these things then pray, do penance so that we will, uh, we will receive uh, all the help that we need. Uh, then there will be no Mass on Monday and Tuesday. I hope it's a big sacrifice for you and uh, offer it to God uh, especially to all these intentions. And Wednesday, the Mass will be at 6 p.m. Thursday, special day of adoration. Uh, we'll have Mass at 7.30, and uh, the, the adoration will start with the school at 8.30. And you know the purpose of this uh, per perpetual adoration. Everywhere there is an adoration in the world every day with the society, for the victory over the interior and exterior enemies of the church, for the return of Rome and the bishops to the traditional doctrine of the church, for the sanctification of priests and candidates for the priesthood and the awaken awakening of priestly and religious vocations. All these intentions are dear, very dear for all of us, and we really need to pray, and that's why we have this... Uh, Adoration on Thursday. Next, uh, and today there will be, as I'm leaving, uh, there will be no Vespers today exceptionally, but there will be Vespers next Sunday. And uh, next Sunday, Father Bakeriso is coming uh, and will give you a conference between the Sang Mass and the High Mass about his school in Argentina. You can help him uh, in his duties. Uh, and uh, he will preach also all masses, and, I, and we'll, I will have some help, and there will be more occasion for confession next uh, weekend. It's a blessing, yeah? Also, the Rosary Prayers group will uh, resume uh, on Wednesday. It's not on the, on the schedule, but uh, uh, try to uh, be generous we entered the year of Fatima. I just have to remind you, especially because you were not so many for the first Friday of this year, the first Saturday of this year, and we need to make efforts. Uh, there will be also during the year occasions to receive many plenary indulgences. Uh, we will try to have some uh, devotions uh, every 13th of every month of this year, and we'll keep the statue of Our Lady of Fatima. And on this occasion, you will be able to receive, according to the usual conditions, the plenary indulgence. But I really encourage all of you to pray the rosary, to pray hard the rosary, and to invite other people to pray the rosary. That's why these, uh, these prayer, uh, rosary prayer groups, has, it's such a good tool. It's very easy. You can do, you can start a group with anybody, anywhere, at any time. And you, you have the help. You go online on the, on the website. You have the catechism. You just print the sheet for all your people. You just have to read the sheet. You don't, be, need, don't need to be a great uh, speaker. And after your, uh, the, 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 the rosary with your group, you just have this time of catechism that you can uh, discuss afterwards. It's a necessity. 
it's a real necessity. Uh, the catechism is there to feed your prayer as well. And thank you for your help uh, and your generosity. We, we need your generosity during this year, especially during this year. Uh, don't wait for the Pope to consecrate Russia. If you don't pray, it will never happen. Just a few words for Bishop Feli. See, it's not easy to lose your parents in a few months. Both of them, he lost both of them, his mother a few months ago, and uh, his father passed away. Uh, I knew his father because they were neighbors in Econ. Uh, the father of Bishop Feli was the director of the power plants in Echo. They were just living uh, near to the seminary, near to the seminary. Very holy people. If you can have a prayer for Mr. Feli, and uh, so that if he's not yet in heaven, that uh, your prayers can send him quickly to heaven. Um, then of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Each year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. We learn so many things with all these uh, joyful mysteries uh, that we contemplate with uh, Christmas and uh, all uh, the epiphany we had this week, the beautiful coming of the kings uh, and the celebration this week of uh, the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great mystery of the first miracle of our Lord in Cana, and today we have the finding of our Lord Jesus Christ in the temple and the many, many lessons we can receive. They are very practical lessons. And this is the way you must read the gospel. Just enter in the story and apply what you learn to your own life. It's extremely simple. And this is the teaching of the gospel, the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the dogma to the moral. The dogma gives you all the principle of the way you must live your life. It's, it's very simple. Just open your heart, open your mind, Open your soul, and the Lord will make you happy and peaceful, and you will continue to follow the good direction. We have first in this gospel a great lesson about our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Who is our Lord Jesus Christ? At the temple, we have the manifestation of his divine filiation, and we have also the manifestation of his human nature. Clearly, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? I am the son of God. And Jesus, continues the gospel, increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. God cannot increase. This is for his human nature. Our Lord Jesus Christ increased. This is this amazing person, divine person, one person and two natures. Two natures united in one divine person. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them, and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. The beautiful intelligence of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's quite simple in him. It's more complicated for us to understand. You have two nature, then you have two intelligence in our Lord Jesus Christ. One which is divine, the other one, which is human. And according to these two intelligences, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ has four sciences. According to, to divine intelligence, he has divine science, obvious. And in God, everything is more simple, you see. Divine intelligence, divine science. For human nature, you have human intelligence that will give three science for our Lord Jesus Christ. We find three science according to his human intelligence. The first one is the one that we know. It takes time and uh, some energy and some patience. Uh, you know that, dear children. <laughs> you need to work to learn and, and you acquire the science. This is the, 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 the most basic human science, it, and it was in our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why also he could, gr he could grow in his intelligence. But he had also, because he is God, the science of the saints in heaven. He is infinitely full of grace, and his soul has this science of the saints in heaven. It's a science that we will discover one day when we will meet the Lord in heaven. But there is another science that our Lord Jesus Christ received. It's the science of the angels, the, what we call the infused science. Yeah? It's the ideas of God that come directly to the intelligence, without any explanation, without any reasoning. This is the way angels are thinking. Uh, they don't need senses to apprehend the real world. They have the, the understanding of all reality through the power and the thoughts that God is giving them. We have also a lesson on the familial order which is the order of nature, the order that God made for the family. You have Saint Joseph, he's the head of the Holy Family, and he takes the last decisions for Our Lady and for Our Lord Jesus Christ. He's a man full of confidence in the providence of God, but prudence. That's why they will flee to Egypt. In his government, there is no anarchy, no desertion of authority, the authority that you have to practice for the good of your people. But it's not, it's not also, it's, it, is a, it is not also a tyranny when authority serves pride and selfishness. It's what we call a political authority, balanced authority adjusted to this reality. For that you need to perceive properly reality. This is why we have so many problems with all the political powers today and in the families as well, because everybody is fleeing and denying reality. And we have our blessed lady. She is the spouse the best spouse. <laughs> you cannot imagine a better spouse. And she is the mother. It's the same. You cannot imagine a better mother. She is the mother. And she gives the example. She obeys her husband. And she is obeyed by her child. And we have our Lord Jesus Christ. The little baby here in uh, the nativity and the 12 years old child in today's gospel. Our Lord Jesus Christ is infinitely holier than our Blessed Lady, infinitely holier than Saint Joseph. Our Lady is full of grace. And she is much greater saint than Saint Joseph. But God observes the order he created for common good. 
and for also spiritual good, for the progress of holiness. It's Saint Joseph who is governing the most saints people. We have also here a lesson on duty. Duty according to your state of life. Saint Joseph and our Blessed Lady are parents. Parents according to human society because Saint Joseph is putative father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lady is the mother of God. But we see in them this duty, clearly this duty of state to protect the baby whom God entrusted to them, a baby who is God himself. And we have this heart, heartfelt, heartfelt cry of Our Lady, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. In both of them, you, you see this confidence in God, this trust in holy providence, but also the practice of the sense of duty, and especially through their prudence and their concern for the child. The terrible time for, for the holy innocence was a great warning already. They know that the wicked ones are willing to endanger the life of the divine child. It's also in this duty, you see, there is no duty without proper perception of this reality. First, the reality of yourself, who you are. According to who you are, you have duties. But also, in your duty itself, in your state of life, you have an environment. This is also total reality. And you have to act and to behave according to this reality, not according to your dreams, not according to the little fancy world that you try to build around you. They are not in this mind, in this state of mind, Saint Joseph and Our Lady. They are in this reality, and they have the most real being with them, God himself. God himself. And they know that this child is not a possession. You see, in many families, especially modern families, the parents behave as if they were possessing their child. In most of these families, they possess nothing because their life is totally on credit. But there is one thing, poor victims, their children, and they act as if they were possessing their children. This is a big drama today. Very big drama. You cannot educate any child if you're in this state of mind. You cannot possess any child. You see, you have these terrible, awful stickers in the back of cars. My child, etc., etc. No! It's not a possession. It's a vocation. It's a mission. God trusts in you and God confides you a mission. Take care of this child. Teach him, teach her human life, which is a life of liberty. And this is the great teaching of education to educate your children to liberty, to know what to do with liberty, to be happy in this liberty of the children of God. And this is the great example of the Holy Family that is given to us today. We have also, for our Lord Jesus Christ, this sense of duty towards God. Where, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? He's 12 years old, but he knows that his first duty is God. 
And dear parents, we should not be surprised if by grace one day one of your children is just answering a vocation, a call from God. You cannot oppose that. You cannot oppose that. You cannot destroy this liberty of the child of God. But he, he has also this uh, sense of duty towards his parents. Towards, towards his parents, he obeys. He's a child, and his third duty, and dear children, <laughs> learn that from our Lord Jesus Christ. Your first duty of state as children, pupils, students, is to obey. If you fail in this first duty, your life will be a ruin, total ruin. Ah. Every examination of conscience, dear children, what about my obedience? You just obey as soon as you can. You do whatever you ask to do, and you will be happy. After you can do whatever, especially go to play outside, even when it's cold. And for us, we have here a great teaching about all our duties. First, that we should never lack of confidence, especially confidence in holy providence, and that there is no sanctification, there is no holiness without sense of duty, without knowing our own vocation, what God is uh, awaiting from us. We have to do everything humanly prudent after the concrete, concrete teachings of reality. But for that you need to know, not to fear, not to escape, not to flee this reality with the many addictions that this world is offering you. No. Face it. Face it. This is our duty, is to face the reality of ourselves, the reality of our world, and to bring this world to our Lord Jesus Christ, King. Don't decide anything after your feelings, after your imagination, after blinding pride or foolish romanticism that are all against reality. Judge everything after the advice of God. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. Our Lady is tasting. Our Lady is contemplating everything she is living. Why? It's another teaching, great teaching for us to be ready for sacrifices because she will have to sacrifice her God and her Son. And we have to sacrifice every day out of love. But if you want to really, really sacrifice to God out of love, you need to contemplate. You need to pray. You need to be in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't practice this presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't pray, if you don't contemplate, you will be left alone with your cross, without the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a curse. This is the curse of our times. Let us pray, especially Our Lady, Our Lady of Fatima today, that she will communicate as the sense of common good, which is the sense of reality. And especially in this sense of reality, the sense of our duty of state. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Church.